It's time now to know what's on the front pages of Nigerian newspapers. Joining me in the studio is political technocrat Dr. <coughs> Dayo Kayode and public affairs analyst Sijibumi Adebi Ibene. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Good morning. Good morning. How so was your weekend? We, weekend was great. How was yours? Beautiful, except for him that is talking about Cavani. Manchester United. Well, no, please. It's beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> 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 All right, so we'll look at uh, the newspapers. Uh, uh, this morning, headlines here. We're starting with the Daily Trust. Bruno massacre, death toll hits 110, as 43 buried. Boko Haram slaughtered my two children in, in my presence. We saw attack after arresting insurgents. Says villagers, uh, we're in difficult situation. Says Zulum, Nigerians UN express anger. Solar power Niger, that's a national economy, 25 million Nigerians to pay 3.6 trillion naira in three years for outright ownership. National grid collapses again, says TCM. Leadership newspaper says experts seek better package for police to tackle insecurity. That's what the leadership newspaper is saying this morning. The Daily Times says Boko Haram kills farmers, 43 farmers. That's in the Daily Times this morning, Boko Haram kills 43 farmers. The Punch newspaper says anger spreads as UN says 10 Bruno farmers killed. Several still missing as governor leads burial of 43 Bruno farmers. Boko Haram still operating strongly in many parts of our state says Zulum. Rise up and protect yourselves against attacks, CNG tell Northerners. The nation says outreach of a killing. Uh, 43 slain farmers buried in Bruno state a professor killed in Benue, 10 killed in Plateau, Kaduna attack. Uh, most violent, says UN. Zulum seeks more federal government action. Buhari orders troops deployment. A Daily Sun is saying, Black Day in Brno State. That's what says uh, the bold header in Daily Sun this morning. The Vanguard says, yeah, outrage over killing of 43 farmers, fishermen in Brno State. The, na the news direct, Nigeria news direct, is saying national, nationwide blackout over power grid collapse. Nationwide blackout over power grid collapse. And the blueprint here is saying gunmen killed 10 in Kaduna Plateau communities. That's what it's saying in the blueprint. Gunmen killed 10 in Kaduna Plateau communities. Business, they says banks feel pain as low yield environment hits revenue. Business AM is saying Nigeria faces mixed bag of global macro trends in 2021. That's according to KPMG. Business AM, Nigeria faces mixed bag of global uh, macro trends in 2021, according to KPMG. So we'll stick with two newspapers this morning, two stories. The Nigerian News Direct and The Punch, starting with The Punch newspaper. Anger spreads as UN says 10 Bruno farmers killed. Several still missing as governor leads uh, burial of 43 Bronu farmers. Boko Haram still operating strongly in many parts of our states. That's according to Governor Zulum. Rise up and protect yourselves against attacks, CNG tells Northerners. Gentlemen, the governor on Saturday um, had to bury some 43 rice farmers, which was quite a devastating situation for everyone there. What's your take on all of this? This continued um, killings in... The Northeast, it's a source of concern for many. I will first like to say, may the source of the departed rest in peace. And um, it's getting one too many. Mm. And for some time, I think the Nigerian security architecture has failed woefully. And it's high time we found a way around it. We are now used to, you know, condolence messages. Mm. These killings are from the same people, um, different adjectives to, you know, define it. And one thing that is getting to me is the fact that in Nigeria, we are redefining terrorism. We now look at how many people have been killed, Mm. So people argue on it's 43, it's 80, it's 110. Forgetting that people have been killed. Killed. And for some time now, we got the signal, but we didn't do anything about it. 
It's the not is today. They are at war. That's courtesy of Boko Haram. But do you know that last year, cultists also killed people in River State. We didn't see anything about it. Just two weeks ago, 37 people died in Edo State, court clashes. It was normal to us. He just made the headline. Nobody really, you know, mentioned or deliberated on it because to us, they are cultists. An ACP that was caught in the court fire eventually died. And most times you will see that innocent people will have died, but we've painted it as court fracas. Now, getting back to Bono State, this same Bono State, 40, over 40 people were killed yeah. in 2013. Yeah. Students, Boniyadi. The same rhetoric from government. Government is a continuum. So when are we going to stop it? If we don't do something now, I pity the next person. All of them are just in for 2023. I pity the next person that will be at the hands of affairs in this country. Because as at that time, God forbid, we'll be talking about hundreds, two hundreds. Then we will start, you know, analyzing in terms of numbers. Oh, these people died during your own time. These people died during your own time. It's been, it's now, been happening. So we have, to, we have to really sit down. Stakeholders should sit down. What are we doing? What are we not doing right? That, that, that's the do question. we need help? That's the question that has come do to mind need several, to, several times. Do we need to, you know, invite, uh, uh, swallow our pride and invite other countries mm -hmm. that have the, 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 the equipment. Okay. So, so the, these are the things we need to, to really work on. So let me go to that you kind know, of Nigeria has been ranked third in the Global Terrorism Index. Of course, with this one now, um, I don't know what's next. Looking at all of this, what have we not done well? What? Let me first of all uh, express my condolences to the governor of uh, Brunel State and the uh, the families that were also involved. We don't need help. The things we have not done right is because we have not been able to say the right thing. We have not been able to tell the government the truth. Many of us have been shying away from this. When I was reading about this over the weekend, you know where my mind went to? One James Aliche's book, Hand Me a Fig Leaf. Mm. There was an alibi. And not until when that alibi was unraveled, you couldn't get to the end of that particular fig leaf. Okay? What am I saying? Sometimes ago, a particular governor went to settle some people in charge. He said, this Boko Haramist, this is and that, I have gone to charge to go and settle them. Who are those people you settled? That means, that means there is a kind of a connivance somewhere by some people in power against the people they are ruling. If not, how come since all these days you have not been able to arrest anybody? Rather, rather even those people that you, you arrested you said you are taking them for one retreat for two weeks, and mm, then you are okay. trying to reintegrate them into the society. Let's say the truth here. Mm. So that means along the line, you have been dining and whining with these people. And you know, you know that if you now do anything contrary, they will spill the beans. Remember, Madame Taraba. Mm. <laughs> the other time I mentioned it. That if care is not taken, if a case was not handled with style, diplomacy, she will spill beans about what is or what was behind uh, Chiburgess. We, I mean, we are, we are all Nigerians, we, are, we, are, we know all this. We saw all that these is things. One. That is one. Two, going to the cutting thing, too, in uh, Rivers. 
You see, there is no doubt about it that what is inside of you will be, will be portrayed yeah. by the activities around you. Do you get all these thoughts? Let us trace them. And then let us see whether they have been, some people have been handling them with their glove kits or not. Look at, look at the Americans. They are purple. They are proposed to people now. Just when American was uh, was uh, kidnapped mm. in Nigeria Republic and brought down to Nigeria, how many hours did it take them to, to rescue their, their citizen? So you don't see our government making some vacuous statements, statements that has no power behind it, just to bamboozle you and I. So, my brother, it's not that we need any help anywhere. Not until when we Nigeria decide to be saying the truth, say the way it is, and then they will not know that these guys, oh, they have known what we are doing. But in, in, when, before that will happen, there might be more killings. Sure, that's what I'm saying. The killings that are going on right now in Nigeria, it's a kind of a conspiracy. What sort of conspiracy? By the leadership. What sort of conspiracy now? Listen to me. Is it what you know, gain would you know, said, whoever is conspiring listen, get? See, some people went somewhere to go and settle some people in Chad. That means they know them. Yeah. That means they know who and who are perpetrating this. Yeah. That means they know how these people entered into our territory. Then they come and tell us that they don't know how these people are entering into our territory. If they don't know how they are right. entering into our territory, how do they know where they are to go mm. and settle them? Right. Look at what happened in Chad at that time when when the Chadians, the when the Chadians, the Chadian president, yeah, and they his son, the and his son, they led the troops and sent them out. All right, all right. So let's so go. So we, we need to be decisive on what to do. All right. So let's let's go to other stories Find now. Me a fig leaf. <laughs> Let's go to the Nigerian News Direct this morning. Talking about the nationwide blackout, it says nationwide blackout over power grid collapse. The national economy is saying 25 million Nigerians to pay 3.6 trillion years for outright ownership. National grid collapses again. That's according to the TCN. Gentlemen, yesterday the national grid collapsed and um, led to outrage in many parts of the country. So, Jibumi, how looking at all of this, money has been spent to ensure we have constant power. This is like the third time this year that we're having a, a failure of the national grid. How does this translate? It's the story of Nigeria is simple. You cannot build something on nothing. Mm. When the foundation is, um, how do they say it in the Bible? It's faulty. It's faulty. What can the righteous do? From the beginning of the contract, everything was not properly done. How do you think so? It's obvious. <laughs> we sold licenses to power people, people, people that bought the, the, the discos, the jenkos, and the government retained maybe 51% of the TCN or 70% of the TCN because as of today, the government controls the TCN. And after that time, you started giving them bailouts. So it's like selling me a car and giving me money to take care of the car. Not once, but twice or three times. And these people have in their contract that every five years, they, they must review the electricity tariff. So why give them money? So we know that there is a problem there. The, 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 the government is just trying to find, you know, palliatives of power. This is solar. People are going to be paying for 4000 every mm -hmm. month for three years, and it will eventually become, become theirs. For me, it's, um, it's a palliative. It's good. I won't say, stand there and say it's not good, because they are targeting the Rural Electrification um, Commission, yeah. targeting people that don't have access to power at all, people that are off the grid. So their children must go to school, they must study. So that's a very good initiative. But it is still trying to prone all those uh, bad leaves. We have not really attended to the problem. We cannot revoke that license or that contract because we know that the burden on the Nigerian state 
they will never get out of it because of what have, have been penciled down in that contract. CM, Siemens have been invited in to help the TCN, to help the Jenkos as well as the Discos. So I, I believe that what we must do is to fast track and facilitate their involvement. The, 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 um, and their engagement. I wonder, so, uh, what is stopping us from having constant power in this country? It's just like... Because over the years we've been talking about constant power, having constant light. You know, so, someone made a joke that his child was saying up Nepal before. Now, uh, he was saying up Nepal no, no, now his child is saying up Nepal. Up Nepal. It's mm. simple. Mm -hmm. It's just you have a generator in your house and you don't maintain it very well. You don't do it very well. We, 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 can, we can say this is what is happening now. But it's been years of decadence. And even in the security sector we just talked about, mm. the, this government just started buying some aircraft and all that. Yeah. So if you have not done anything, it was towards the end of Obasanjo's regime that he realized that he shouldn't be spending money mm. on those decrepit um, um, machineries again and started doing new power plants, new um, generation companies. Okay. But it was too late for him. You see, we need to look at even the evolution of, I mean, of uh, electricity. Like Edison in New York, it was only in New York that we were having uh, this uh, electricity then. Then before some other states started having them. And from history, I also read that it now came to Nigeria, Lagos, in I think 1890-something. Then before it got to Jaws and all that. And then when we were growing up, we grew up to see ECN. Mm -hmm. All right? And even at that time, you are not seeing all these things we are seeing. You see some people somewhere, they will just be there, they be generating and then be distributing. Some other people elsewhere, they be generating and be distributing. But out of greed, out of greed now, a particular government now came and they decide to as to assume everything to themselves. Where they, you see, what we are having in 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 a, in the power sector is something that is happening to us in the petroleum sector, whereby we decided to abandon our refineries that can refine about four fifty thousand naira. I mean, four fifty thousand uh, barrels uh, uh, barrels per day. Eh? And then we are now going to Nigerian Republic, where it is just two hundred. That they can refine. Okay, just like we do. Do you understand? Yeah. And then we now use we now use about eight billion dollars mm. to now take pipe that be taking a, a crude oil to Niger from. Do you understand? So that that is a kind of green mentality that we have. But unfortunately, unfortunately again, those of us, the people, the economy, the economy team, right. the economic class of Nigeria that is supposed to talk. Because they are also feeding fat. From me, they will never talk. Mm. So not until when myself, Shijibo, me, Bennett, yourself, and every other person, we keep on hammering in on them. Okay. And but look, we know what is happening. And then we are not going to allow this. Right. And then we now use our voters' card against them. But look, we also, we can do this thing better. All then right. we begin to see a better Nigeria. Gentlemen, thank you very much for talking to us on these uh, issues that we discussed in newspapers this morning. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me.